Assalamu alaikum, hello everyone. In this video, I'm gonna solve paper 62, February March 2024, IGCSE Chemistry, Cambridge. Also, I recommend everyone to pay attention to the ideas mentioned around the question, not only to stick to the literal question to get the maximum benefit. So, let's get started. Question one calcium carbonate is an insoluble solid calcium carbonate can be made by adding excess aqueous calcium chloride to aqueous sodium carbonate here is the equation and here you see guys we see that the substance is in excess which is this is excess take care aqueous calcium chloride which is this substance is excess and of course when a substance in reactant is excess so it means the second one is limiting reactant so this one is going to be limiting and this is excess it means by the end of this reaction we're going to see this substance goes to be used up completely but the first one CACL2 because it's excess so it's supposed to stay in the reaction okay here we have a student makes a sample of calcium carbonate the first two steps of the method are shown in figure 1.1 so here we have the first two steps. Step one, as you see, we add excess aqueous calcium chloride to aqueous sodium uh, carbonate. And take care, guys, here we have this is aqueous sodium and this is aqueous calcium chloride. It means both of them are already dissolved in water and they are aqueous solutions. And in step two, actually, we stir the mixture by this uh, tool, as you see, which is A. So question A, name the item of apparatus labeled A in figure 1.1. So of course, guys, I think everyone knows in our chemical lab, we use a glass rod. Usually we use glass rod to stir. So the first one could be a glass rod. This is a glass rod, okay, to stir the solutions. Letter B, suggest why the mixture is stirred in step 2. Hey guys, we said a little early that the two solutions are already aqueous, so usually we dissolve to dissolve the solute in the solvent, but now both of them are already aqueous and they are dissolved already. But actually we stir in order to mix them together. After we make them together, also you know that stirring usually increases the rate of the reaction. So here the answer could be, we say, to mix the solutions so the rate of the reaction is faster Okay, so the main purpose for this is to mix the two solutions together and also the rate of the reaction is going to be faster. Okay, let us see after step two, the student filters the mixture to remove the solid calcium carbonate from it and collect the filtered. You know guys, the word filtered here means soluble, soluble substances in the solution. This is filtered. So the soluble part of everything is the filtered. And the part which is, you know, like filtered already, which insoluble is called, you know, residue. So we have something called residue, which is insoluble part. So this residue is solid and it's insoluble. So after doing this, we have two parts actually, the filtrate, which is the soluble solution, and we have residue, which is the solid insoluble part. So here again, draw a label diagram to show the apparatus used for this filtration. I think this is very easy uh, uh, drawing, but we can do it together. We need to start by the funnel. This is filter funnel of course you can control better than me so here inside we need to draw also the filter paper so funnel and filter paper and finally we need also to label the shape and here we need also to stand the funnel over a container so we could use 
for example a conical flask so here also we need to show the filtered now let's label everything here so this is actually this is the filtered so which is the soluble part and here we have don't forget to draw here actually guys this is the residue or the insoluble part so take care this one is called residue which is solid or insoluble and here this is the funnel and you have also to refer to the this is filter paper okay guys this is filter paper so now your uh, diagram is full next question this is the the solid calcium carbonate obtained by filtration is not pure so here we talk about this residue actually this residue now is CaCO3 which is solid here you say it's not pure okay so identify one substance other than water so we need to skip water from our answers which is mixed with the calcium carbonate and makes it impure if we come back again to the equation or the, the mixture of the reaction but let's come back to the equation itself so here actually this substance is limiting which is supposed to be used up after the end of the reaction so this is not found this one not found so we can cancel it so after the reaction we have this solid the basic residue and we have make sure between sodium chloride and aqueous calcium chloride so we could write any one of them that makes the calcium carbonate is impure so the two substances here you have up again calcium chloride or sodium chloride because they are mixed with. so this is either calcium chloride okay ca cl2 aqueous or you could write also the sodium chloride okay you could write this or just second one the double i describe how the substance you have identified in di which is this substance uh, can be removed from the calcium cabinet so again to the drawing how can we remove the you know this uh, residue or calcium carbonate which is solid actually it's contaminated with some uh, calcium chloride or sodium chloride so i think the easiest method is to add the distilled water to rinse this residue so now it's pure so the answer here again so we need to pour or to add distilled water for this residue or the calcium carbonate solid so we can rinse and make it clean okay we could say rinse the residue by adding an amount of distilled water so now we can make the residue pure after killing letter a describe a test the student can do on the filtrate contained in c to show that the calcium chloride used in the excess give the result the student obtained if the calcium chloride is in excess so here we need to make sure that calcium chloride we used at the very beginning was in excess so we need to make what is the test and also what is the result so the substance here again guys this is called calcium chloride of course by testing anything we need to check two parts in calcium chloride we have a cation ca2 plus and we have cl minus here we have two and here we have this is one so to check this guys we need to check chloride anion or calcium cation but actually we can't check chloride here because also we have in the product this is NaCl so we have here also Na plus and we have Cl minus so Cl is repeated so we can't make sure this Cl is related to calcium chloride or for NaCl so actually test for amine Cl now is not available 
Okay, so we can test the presence of calcium. Okay, and for this reason, we could use the test which is already in your paper six, and this is very good point to have this. So here, guys, you check this is calcium test. This is cation calcium. So we can add here, if you check here, so we could add aqueous sodium hydroxide. So if a white PBT, uh, which is insoluble in excess, so the cation is cast. So this is one method or one way for your answer. Actually, we have another way by making sure that no Na2CO3 actually here. And this is easier, by the way. We can write it down also. Because we said this is limiting, so theoretically it's supposed to not found by the end of the reaction. So if we check the presence of, look at this anion, which is here, this anion is CO3 to minus. We can check for this anion, this is minus. Okay, so we check for the carbonate by adding acid to produce carbon dioxide. So if we check this carbonate anion, if we have carbon dioxide which make like uh, uh, effervescence or fizzing, so it means we still have this. If we have a negative result for the test, it means this substance is limiting and already the calcium chloride was excess, okay? So let's say by adding an acid or by adding, here the test is by adding an acid, for example, let's say hydrochloric or whatever, so HCl, this is aqueous diluted acid. So the result, because the result now should be negative, so negative means no carbonate, so we could say no effervescence or also you say or no fizzing so it means no carbon dioxide or no carbonate so no the the substance is already used so actually the substance was excess actually it's calcium chloride question two a student investigates the reaction between aqueous sodium carbonate and two different solutions so here we have aqueous sodium carbonate and two different solutions of dilute hydrochloric acid labeled A and B. So we have actually A and B and both of them hydrochloric acid, both of them dilute hydrochloric acid. So the student does three experiments. You have to take care about the experiments, guys. Please read carefully the instructions. So here, rinse abjurate with distilled water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid A and then rinse a conical flask with distilled water only and then fill the burette with dilute hydrochloric acid A run some of the dilute hydrochloric acid out of the burette so that the level of the dilute hydrochloric acid is on the burette scale record the initial burette reading and then use the, a measuring cylinder to pour 25 cm cube of aqueous sodium carbonate into a conical flask so add five drops, here we have five drops of methyl orange indicator to the conical flask. Stand the conical flask on a white tile, you know, also white tile below the conical flask. So slowly add dilute hydrochloric acid A from the burette to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the solution becomes orange. So, you know, orange here is the end point for the titration. And then record your final period reading. So actually, guys, we need to imagine what happens. So this is experiment one. I think I recommend everyone to do something like um, a draft or something for yourself in your paper to ease the understanding of the question. So here we have, this is experiment one. So actually we have here conical flask. So quickly, you don't need to draw something professionally just to draw something quickly and here you have like a puret and here you have this is acid a remember this is acid a and here we have this is the 
let's check this is calcium carbonate no this is no calcium carbonate here we have this is up uh, this is aqueous sodium carbonate so this is sodium carbonate in a to co3 and this is 25 centimeter cube and the indicator used here was methyl orange okay this is for experiment one for experiment two here we have a uh, refill the burette with dilute hydrochloric acid a run some of the dilute hydrochloric acid out of the burette so that the level of the dilute hydrochloric acid is on the burette scale then record the initial period so it means we need to repeat but now after using the second one so here empty the conical flask and rinse it with distilled water use the measuring cylinder to pour 25 centimeter cube aqueous uh, sodium carbonate into the conical flask add five drops of here this is the first look at this guys five drops of thymolphthalein indicator you know guys this is another indicator we started this year so stand the conical flask on a white tile slowly add dilute hydrochloric acid a from the burette to the conical flask while swirling the flask until the solution becomes colorless record the final purity so the only one difference here guys as you see we used another indicator which is thymolphthalein okay so actually we need to show something here this is experiment two and then we have almost everything is the same except the indicator so here we have everything almost the same but this is the burette here stand like this of course this is a yeah, quick drawing and here we have also again we still have acid a again but the difference here is this is also na to CO3 aqueous 25 centimeter cube but here we have this is thymphethalene this is indicator okay so the last experiment here experiment 3 repeat experiment 1 so repeat experiment 1 means actually we need to use the same indicator which is methyl orange take care guys here experiment 1 means we use methyl orange again okay so using dilute hydrochloric acid b instead of dilute hydrochloric acid a and here question a so before starting also here we need to draw this is experiment three to see what happens experiment three so we have conical flask again n a 2 c o 3 this is aqueous 25 centimeter cube the burette standing quickly and then we have here again because it said repeat the experiment one so the, uh, the the indicator here was methyl orange methyl orange okay and here the acid is he said this is acid b so experiment one and two they are common in acid a but they are different they are common in everything here also that in a2 co3 and here everything is the same but they are different in the indicators here methyl orange here is thymolphthalein and experiment three and experiment one they are common in methyl orange the indicators okay so let's check what's gonna be here so letter a use the burette uh, diagram in figure 2.1 figure 2 by 2 okay here so experiment one we need as you see guys to record the reading for the burettes here we have a table so i think it's easy for everyone but please take care during your reading for the uh, values try to get the correct value please guys with no mistakes so the first one now this is let's start by this here in experiment one you read now the you know guys the consume, consumed this is the consumed solution okay so we started actually from zero and then you go down to read what's gonna be here so this is less than one so actually this is 0 0.8 you see guys this is 0 0.8 because it's before one so for experiment one take care this is initial reading it's 0 0.8 and actually guys take care when you record your 
reading don't put it by mistake in final period because this is you see guys please don't shift between final and initial here this is initial so put it in initial final put it in final take care please so let's come back to this is we're still in experiment one and this is final reading if you check final reading guys here this is 26 and then point one and this is almost point two so here you have 26.2 this is the final reading so this is 26.2 let's go to experiment two and experiment two here this is 0 0.1 and then point two see guys this is 0 0.2 and here for the final we have this is 12 and this is before 13 almost by so this is actually let's say 12.9 and this is 0 0.2 so take care again 0 0.2 this is initial here 0 0.2 and the final is 12.9 12 12.9 12 for the last experiment 3 so here you see this is zero until this is i think this is exactly one this is here one take care guys here also we have very important tip actually don't try it one only like this you need to add one decimal place at least why because here guys you see we added one decimal place so in your initial now you need to write one point zero remember this believe this is one decimal place even if you don't have if you have integer number like one or two or whatever add one decimal place at least also this is for temperatures okay not only for the volumes for the final reading so this is 39 and here 39 exceeds 39 by 0.1 so this is 39.1 39.1 so this part is a good part in your exam so try to not miss any mark please so here we need to just minus this minus this so we can do by calculator so this one is going to be uh, 25.4 and for this is going to be 12.7 and here for this one is going to be 38.1 so next one here you have this is b state which solution of dilute hydrochloric acid a or b is the more concentrated so we compare between a or b also you need to explain your answer so if we come back again to the drawing here this is a look at this this is solution a and this is b so again guys this is acid a and this is acid b so actually we need to write down the values for the title we got from the experiments here in the table so this is remember guys this is a this is acid a but here is acid b so if you compare between the values this is 25.4 and this is 38.1 so it means this volume was smaller than this volume so you know guys that uh, actually the titration and the end point and here we used actually guys uh, the uh, you know here we used the methyl orange and here we use the same methyl orange because we repeated the same steps so it means the less the volume it means the more the concentration so it means that in experiment a acid a this one the volume is less because this is more concentrated okay guys so we could say here so which one is more concentrated so this one is a so this is acid a okay for the explanation for this so we could say because the volume needed in case of acid a is less than that in acid b so you have to remember guys remember this please the less the volume the more the concentration
okay double i deduce how many times more concentrated this solution of dilute hydrochloric acid than the more solution of dilute hydrochloric acid so in this case guys to know how many times more concentrated actually we need to make again the values of the table so you have two values this is 25.4 and 38.1 so you need to use your uh, calculator use the bigger number which is 38.1 and then divided the lower one which is 25.4 so the value is going to be 1.5 so if you do this by saying here this is the answer 38.1 divided 25.4 so equals 1.5 okay so CI compared the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid A used in experiment 1 to the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid A used in experiment 2. So actually when we compare we need to state which one is bigger, which one was uh, as greater than the other. So I think if we check here again the values. So remember guys here we compare between experiment 2 and experiment 1. Okay. So, here in experiment 1, the volume was 25.4. In experiment 2, which is A also, but the volume was 12.7. So, actually, we need to say volume of experiment 1 is more than that of experiment 2 okay so here we need also to repeat the same as we did in the previous one we take the two values and make also divided so we use 25.4 divided 12.7 so this is 25.4 divided 12.7 this is the second part so also use your calculator to put this so I'm gonna do with you now so this is 25.4 divided 12.7 so equals 2 okay guys so now this is 2 or double the volume so second one deduce the volume of dilute hydrochloric acid be required to reach the end point uh, if experiment 3 is repeated using thymolphethalene indicator instead of methyl orange indicator, use your answer to CI to help you. Okay, guys, let's come back to our draft here. Here, we could say if we replace methyl orange here in experiment 3 by this is thymolphethalene. Okay, so actually, guys, to find the relation between them, you can focus on experiment one and experiment two. Here, this is acid A, here, this is acid A. This is Na2SCO3, 25 centimeter cube. Here is the same. Okay, so actually, the difference is this is methyl orange indicator, this is thymolphetalin. And if we come back again to the result we got, this is two. Two means that the volume here actually is twice the volume in experiment two or in other words the volume in experiment two is half to the volume of experiment one so you remember this one was 25.4 and this one was 12.7 so again this value is half regarding to this value okay guys so if we do the experiment three by uh, instead of methyl orange and we use thymolphethalene it means we're gonna go here the volume to p half the value we need to use the value reduced from this and then divide it to because again the relation between indicator methyl orange and thymolphethalene so thymolphethalene produces half value of methyl orange as we saw from experiment one and two so again here we use the value produced from methyl orange and we divided two so actually the value we got here from this was in the table here this is 38.1 so we use 38.1 38.1 and we say divided two okay so let's make also in the calculator and you can also write your uh, draft here so 
here we write this is 38.1 38.1 divided 2 okay so this is divided 2 so the answer is going to be 19 Point zero five, and the second mark here is to the measuring unit which centimeter cube okay guys okay letter d the start of experiment three the burette is drained with distilled water and then with dilute hydrochloric acid b letter i identify the substance removed from the burette when it's rinsed with distilled water at the start of experiment three so here in experiment three when we rinse, see guys, this is acid B. So it's supposed that the burette was filled with acid A. So actually the substance is rinsed from before starting experiment 3. This is acid A. So here we can write this is acid A. Double I describe how the result of the titration would change if the burette was not rinsed with dilute hydrochloric acid B after it had been rinsed with water. See guys. If we don't trans actually with acid B, so it means we still have some remains of water. So it means water will mix with acid B. So actually make it more dilute. So we need to use more volume of acid B. So we could say more volume of acid B is used because now it's diluted so it can't neutralize the aqueous solution in the conical flask triple i explain why the conical flask is not rinsed with aqueous sodium carbonate after it's rinsed with water here guys in case of conical flask actually this is unlike pirates because if we rinse conical flask with aqueous sodium chloride uh, carbonate so actually now we're gonna increase the volume of the aqueous sodium carbonate Okay, guys, because if we rinse, so it means remains of aqueous sodium carbonate will stay in the conical flask. So we're going to increase the volume of sodium carbonate. So here we could say because the volume of aqueous sodium carbonate increase letter e explain why a white tile is used during the titration so i think guys you see in the chemical lab we use this white tile to make the color change more obvious so actually guys without white tile okay we can see the color change but actually when we put a white tile below the conical flask now you can see the color change more obvious than before letter f describe the effect on the result of warming the aqueous sodium carbonate used in experiment one before carrying out the titration explain your answer so here guys we need to describe the effect on the result this is really important to focus on this we need to know that describe of uh, describe the effect on the result so actually guys if we warm you see guys everyone knows that it could uh, increase the reaction rate so the whole process will be done faster than before but what about the results we recorded in the table do you think guys uh, warming aqueous sodium carbonate will disturb the results because we need to check the result now so actually guys no effect no effect actually on the results okay the whole process of the reaction maybe is faster but the results will be the same so the explanation we could say this is because same number of moles of Na2CO3 so they will produce the same result okay guys now question number three a student test two substances solid C and solid D test on solid C solid C actually this is ammonium iodide which is NH4I so actually here we have two ions 
the NH4 cation and you have iodide anion. Okay, so the sodium dissolves with solid C in water to form a solution C. So now it's aqueous, AQ. The sodium dissolves solution C into sorry divides solution C into three approximately equal portions. So here we have three portions. So you know we have like three test tubes, as we do in the lab usually, and then we need everyone has an amount of a portion of the ammonium iodide and then we add in the first experiment a uh, the first option uh, the student adds about one centimeter of dilute nitric acid followed by a few drops of aqueous barium nitrate so we need to uh, record our observation so you guys we need to come back again to the table of tests so quickly go to the table of tests so remember here we have iodide here we have the ions you need to check so this is ammonium positive and this is iodine. So again, if we come back to the uh, test here, so this is, uh, you see ammonium, this is ammonium in H4. And here you have, this is the effect of aqueous sodium hydroxide and the effect of aqueous ammonia. For the effect of aqueous ammonia, no effect. And here for the effect of aqueous sodium hydroxide, we have ammonia produced on warming. So actually this is not the indicator we use because here this is, nitric acid followed by barium nitrate also if we check the iodide ions up here so check iodide so actually we need to acidify dilute nitric acid then uh, add aqueous silver nitrate to see yellow ppt so here this is not also the indicator used look at this this is nitric acid silver nitrate and here this is nitric acid and barium nitrate so actually the final observations are actually no change so again, guys, you need to learn how can you use the, uh, the tables of the test of the, it's already given in your paper. So letter P to the second portion of the solution C, the student adds about one centimeter of dilute nitric acid. Look at this nitric acid followed by drops of aqueous silver nitrate. I think we read it now. Look at this, guys. Look, dilute nitric acid, silver nitrate. This is a typical test. So the positive result is yellow PBT. So now we say a yellow precipitate is formed. Okay, this is from the table as well. Letter C, I, uh, to the third portion of solution C, the student adds an excess of aqueous sodium hydroxide. So excess aqueous sodium hydroxide what about the observation? So, this is again excess sodium. You look at this sodium hydroxide here for ammonia. Actually, ammonia produced on warming, but actually, no observation because you know ammonia is a gas and we can't check the gas itself unless we add something else to check. So, here we don't see anything, no observation actually. So, again, no change, no change regarding to the observation or something to be visible or seen bubble eyes a student warm with the product from a ci here which is ammonia and test any gas given off observation so again guys because this is ammonia so if we need to test this gas which is ammonia you know guys we usually for ammonia because it has an alkaline effect we use a damp red litmus paper so it goes blue so here we say in observation a damp red litmus paper turns blue. This is because the alkaline effect of ammonia gas. And here also remember we record our observation. We don't try it. There is ammonia or something like this. Please don't disturb this answer. So here test on solid D. Uh, here guys you see test one do a flame test on solid D so here you see yellow I think everyone remembers or you can also check yellow for sodium here you can find it down look guys so this is sodium this is flame test also you have it in your paper so it's very wonderful so this is sodium and yellow so it means yellow here tells us that we have sodium cation in A plus and test to gently heat about half of the re remaining solid D. Hold the strip in hydroscobalt to chloride. 
you know this substance in hydroscopic nucleoride actually it's used as a test for pure water remember this, this is test for pure water so you remember guys if there is water the color goes from blue to pink if there is water right this is a test you have to memorize and here steam is given off and condensation form is at the top of the boiling tube the anhydrous cobalt to chloride papers changes color so actually it changes color it means it goes from blue to pink so it means there is water test is re dissolve the remaining solid d in water to form solid uh, solution d divided solution d into three portions to the first portion of solution d add aqueous ammonia drop wise until in excess so here we add aqueous ammonia okay and here we have green precipitate which is insoluble in excess let's check green precipitate in our tables so we can find it twice once for famous iron which is iron 2 and remember we have iron 3 to not uh, mix between them so here we have iron 2 you see guys it gives green pbt insoluble in excess also we can get the same result in case of uh, chromium as you see chromium 3 ticker cr3 it's a green pbt as well soluble in excess so it could be either here in this test the green precipitate could be for fe2 plus or this is could be for chromium cr3 plus for test 4 the second portion of solution they add the piece of aluminium foil Take care guys, we have only one test by using aluminium foil in your table. Take care, this is only one test. If we come back to the table, you check here guys, this is test for, yeah, see guys, for anions. Look at this, you can find uh, aluminium foil here only in one test. This is test for nitrate anion. So actually this test supposed to be for nitrate and again, the aluminium foil is used in case of testing for nitrate only and the product for this is ammonia produced and you know how can we know ammonia by this it changes the damp red litmus paper into blue so actually here suppose we uh, test the presence of nitrate so this is nitrate in O3 test minus and here he said here green precipitate and the red litmus paper remains red what does it mean guys remains red it means no ammonia this is remains red means no n h3 okay so no ammonia no blue color so it means also no nitrate it means no nitrate here also the test is negative test for nitrate because we don't have any gas to change the color from red to blue test five uh, to the third portion of solution d add about five centimeter of uh, dilute nitric acid bubble any gas form it through lime water so here you see effervescence and also lime water becomes a milk cafe. very clear very famous that here we have carbon dioxide gas and of course the anion we test here is carbonate co3 2 minus and its presence as you see because lime water becomes milk now let's go to the part of question i think almost they are solved here you just collect state the final color of the cobalt to chloride paper so we said it goes from uh, blue to pink so here the color is pink Uh, state what iron uh, the observation in test 4 show is not present in test 4 we said the anion here is NO3 minus it's not found here so this is actually nitrate this is test for nitrate anion which is NO3 1 minus and it's not present because no ammonia if identify a gas produced in test 5 so in test 5 the last one the gas was carbon dioxide so this is co2 gas and g identified the three ions in solid d so in solid d actually if you remember the first ion we checked up was na plus this is sodium and here we have either fe2 plus or cr3 plus form is green precipitate and finally also we have here carbonate co3 that produces carbon dioxide makes ever physics 
So we need to collect here because three marks. So the ions here Na plus, and we have also Fe two plus. This is or Cr three plus. Remember, this is one answer. And finally, we have this is and carbonate CO three two minus. So they are the three ions uh, in solid D. Okay. Now question number four, last question of the paper. When excess dilute sulfuric acid is added to solid zinc, hydrogen gas and aqueous zinc sulfate are made. So here is the equation we have. And then plan an experiment to show that copper is a catalyst. So we need to show that copper is a catalyst. In this reaction, your plan should include how the results of the experiment will show that copper is a catalyst for this reaction. Uh, here you are provided with zinc powder, dilute sulfuric acid, copper powder, and common laboratory apparatus. Okay, so actually guys, to prove or to show that here copper, which is used as a catalyst, actually we need to remember what is the definition of the catalyst itself. You know guys, catalyst, catalyst is a chemical substance that speeds up the rate of the chemical reaction and this is very important without it being it changed in mass Okay, so here we have two important factors. If we prove that these factors are found, so this is a catalyst. So if copper speeds up the rate of the reaction and if its mass is stayed with no change, it means copper acts as a catalyst. So again, actually guys, we need in our experiment to accomplish these two factors that copper speeds up the rate. So it speeds up the rate, it means guys, here we refer to shorter time, shorter time or less time taken after using uh, uh, copper. And also, we need to measure the mass of copper before and after the reaction to make sure its mass stays with no change. Okay, so now to save the time of the video, here you have the work. Here, actually, I divided into two parts to ease the answer. Let's check the first part. Here, guys, you could say measure a known excess volume of sulfuric acid and then estimate a certain mass of the zinc powder and then we add zinc powder to sulfuric acid in a conical flask that connected to a gas syringe of course gas syringe to collect the gas produced and also to measure its volume so here estimate the time taken this is one option guys to estimate the time taken by using and here to collect the uh, hydrogen gas produced from the reaction Okay, this is one option. Also, we can estimate the volume of the gas, actually, not the time. Okay, we can estimate the volume produced in a specific time. But this is also another option. Okay, in part two, we're going to repeat all uh, procedures. So, repeat the experiment by using the same, same amounts of reactants. And we need to add an estimated mass of copper powder, which is supposed to be a catalyst. Now, after finishing the experiment, we need to filter the copper, then wash and then dry to make sure it's pure, and then estimate its mass once again. So, in case of uh, the, the mass of copper stays the same, and the time of collecting H2 gas is shorter, so it means copper is a catalyst. Okay, guys, hopefully it's clear. If you have any questions, so you can leave a comment. Thank you so much, guys. Best of luck.